Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, I'm Star Wars Meg, and in today's video I'm going to be explaining my reasons why I think that Revenge of the Sith is the perfect Star Wars movie. Before I get into the video guys, may I please ask you to hit like on this video and to subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already. In addition to that, I would highly appreciate if you hit the alert bell to be notified every time I upload a new video, I'm pretty consistent on this channel. I'm also very proud to announce that I now have a Patreon page um, and for $3 a month you can become a patron which means you get exclusive benefits such as fan requests for videos, monthly Q&As, uh, bonus content and all of that good stuff. Click the link in the description below if you're interested and without further ado guys, let's go on with the video. So I was just thinking lately, there's a lot of criticism for every Star Wars film. For The Last Jedi, there were people who loved it and hated it. For The Rise of Skywalker, there were people who loved it and hated it. For The Force Awakens, there were people who loved it and hated it. You see the trend. But is there really a perfect Star Wars film? Because as sacred as the original trilogy is seen to be, it still has its critics. And the same can be said for the prequels, even though in recent years they've been getting a lot more positive attention. And I thought, perhaps Rogue One is the perfect Star Wars film. But even though it's a favourite for fans, I still don't believe it's the perfect Star Wars movie. It just doesn't pull on the heartstrings of fans in the same way as some of the other films do. So then I gave it a lot of detailed thought. Now in my video where I rank every Star Wars movie from best to worst, I put The Empire Strikes Back as my personal favourite. But even though it's my personal favourite, I don't think it's the perfect Star Wars film in the same way that Revenge of the Sith is. So after some elaboration and some thinking, I came to the conclusion that Star Wars Episode 3 was the best and most perfect Star Wars movie. So now I'm going to give you my reasons why. The first and most prominent reason why Revenge of the Sith is perfect is because if you really think about it, it's the most anticipated Star Wars film of all time. Like, there was never a, f a film in the Star Wars franchise that was more anticipated than Revenge of the Sith. Let me explain. When Star Wars came out, it was new. No one had nostalgia yet. When Empire came out, you know, there was a bit of nostalgia and people loved the film. And Return of the Jedi, uh, when that came out, people were just excited to see the end of the trilogy. Now, fast forward to 1999, when The Phantom Menace came out, it was nostalgia for a new era of Star Wars to see the prequels, but all the build-up was to see Anakin turn into Darth Vader, and that doesn't happen until episode 3. And people knew that George Lucas was making a trilogy, so they knew that the prequels were ultimately coming up to and amassing to the moment of which Anakin Skywalker ceases to exist and instead transforms into Darth Vader. And with such anticipation for a film, comes a certain amount of nostalgia because fans were eager to see how it would tie in with the original trilogy and bring Star Wars full circle so to speak because Star Wars now finally had a conclusion but not a conclusion but the missing piece how did all of this stuff become one with the Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones Anakin is so innocent he's still a child it's almost like there's no way he can turn into a bad guy and then and we see that transformation in Revenge of the Sith. Now, there's more to why I think Revenge of the Sith is the perfect film to that, but that is the main point. The next point I want to make is it's not only transition for Anakin, but it's a transition for Emperor Palpatine. Bear in mind, fans of Star Wars, specifically in the early internet era, were very curious to see how Senator Palpatine would become Darth Sidious or Emperor Palpatine and they hadn't actually seen the Emperor in his full-fledged evil form since Return of the Jedi and any time in the prequels we do see Darth Sidious it's as a hologram until Revenge of the Sith so it's like two coming outs it's Anakin becoming Vader and it's Palpatine becoming the Emperor or Darth Sidious if you prefer. Another crucial reason I believe that Revenge of the Sith is the perfect Star Wars movie is that we actually see Luke and Leia and we see the transition from the prequels into the original trilogy. We see Ben Kenobi as Obi-Wan just before he becomes old Ben. 
Now, of course, the Kenobi series that's going to be coming out on Disney Plus next year will explain everything that happens on Tatooine. But we finally get to see like that aha moment of, oh, I see, so this is how it links into A New Hope. And musically, the, the music is phenomenal at the end of uh, Revenge of the Sith. If you don't believe me, uh, look up John, John Williams's Revenge of the Sith soundtrack. And the finale is absolutely phenomenal. We get themes of uh, the throne room and A New Hope. And it's, it's just absolutely beautiful music. But anyway, I digress. Another reason why I feel that Revenge of the Sith is perfect is that we see a moment that Ben Kenobi talked about in A New Hope, in the original trilogy. A moment which got Star Wars fans back in 1977 very excited. And of course I'm talking about the moment where he says to Luke that his father, Anakin Skywalker, was a great warrior and was a phenomenal friend. Now, in Revenge of the Sith, this is specifically uh, found in the scene where Obi-Wan fights Anakin and he says, you were the chosen one. It was said that you would destroy the Sith, not join them. You are my brother, Anakin. I loved you. And he walks away. And that is the thematic significance that we wanted to see if you were an original trilogy fan. We wanted to see that conflict where Anakin became, you know, Vader. You know, this transition from the friend of Obi-Wan, the brother of Obi-Wan, to this evil Sith Lord who wanted complete control of the galaxy. And we got that. Now, feel free to completely disagree here. But one of the reasons I absolutely love Revenge of the Sith is even though we got a CGI Yoda, we see him say goodbye to Chewbacca and uh, Tarful, and he goes off and away uh, into isolation onto the Dagobah system that we next see him in an empire. So it really brings these characters that are in the original trilogy full circle, so to speak. We get Luke, okay, as a baby, Leia, same, Obi-Wan and Yoda. And we next get to see them in the forms that the original trilogy fans would have seen if they had gone to the movie theatres and cinemas in the 70s and 80s. So with all of this anticipation comes extreme nostalgia. Of course fans were absolutely dying to see this finale and even though Attack of the Clones disappointed and The Phantom Menace was not without its critics back in 1999, it's safe to say that Revenge of the Sith was the best prequel and I think many fans to, to this day still consider it to be the best Star Wars film. And while for me Empire Strikes Back will still be my favourite Star Wars movie, if I'm being completely critical, I would have to say Revenge of the Sith is the perfect Star Wars movie. So that's it guys. I wish you a fantastic rest of the day no matter where you are in the galaxy. May the force be with you and for one last time, please hit like on this video, subscribe to my channel, check all that good stuff down below.